From the St. Louis Public Radio Newsroom, this is The Gateway. It's Friday, July 5th. I'm Jonathan All, in for Abby Larico. Some Illinois teachers set aside part of their summer break to learn about ways to better teach their students about the environment. How do we take care of our water and our soil? All of those things are things you can take back into the classroom no matter what age you work with. Take a trip down the Rock River with teachers in kayaks coming up on The Gateway. A new texting tool is giving the St. Louis County Police Department better information about how their 911 dispatchers are doing. St. Louis Public Radio's Rachel Lippman has more on what the surveys are saying. The department began using the software in late April. Most 911 callers get a text message asking four questions about the dispatcher. There is also an opportunity for the caller to leave comments, which are posted on screens in the dispatch center. That feedback helps boost morale, says Captain Jeremy Romo. He is the commander of the Bureau of Communications. A lot of the people they talk to are not in a good place. They often don't have the opportunity to really see what happens after individuals call in. Romo says nearly 90 percent of respondents are satisfied with the performance of the person who answered their call. He says the most common complaint is wait time. I'm Rachel Lippman. St. Louis Public Radio. Heavy June rainfall led to record-breaking flooding in Iowa, South Dakota, and Minnesota. The waters caused evacuation, emergency declarations, and widespread damage. Dennis Toddy is the director of the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Midwest Climate Hub. He says it's hard to attribute specific events to climate change, but climate change's fingerprints show up almost everywhere. There's pieces of climate change no matter what happens. And this is consistent with what we've seen in the way of increasing precipitation in late winter and spring, and even in the early summer in some cases, and overall larger precipitation events. While rain is increasing in parts of the year, Toddy says climate change is also drying out parts of the Midwest later in summers. The Brickline Greenway received another $5 million from the Missouri Capital Improvement Budget for next year. St. Louis Public Radio's Eric Schmidt reports that funding means the project to connect four major parks in the St. Louis area is nearly halfway funded. The $245 million project aims to link Fairground Park, Forest Park, Tower Grove Park, and Gateway Arch National Park with paved pathways by 2030. There are two segments already complete, one in Cortex and one by the Major League Soccer Stadium. Great Rivers Greenway Communications Manager Dallas Adams says more is coming later this year. We are starting construction. We're actually out to bid right now for a connection that is going to take us from City Park to Harris Doe State University at the corner of Market and Compton. Adams says that segment will be complete by 2027 without any construction delays. She says there is more construction planned to start along North Grand early next year. I'm Eric Schmid, St. Louis Public Radio. Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker is saying little about a meeting he and other Democratic governors had on Wednesday with President Joe Biden. Organized by the White House, the meeting was aimed at addressing Biden's spiritless performance in last week's debate with Republican Donald Trump, as new New York Times-Siena College polling showed Biden falling further behind Trump post-debate. A Pritzker spokeswoman said the governor characterized the president's remarks as candid and appreciated hearing directly from the president for the first time since the debate. High school students in Illinois will start taking the ACT exam next spring when high schools administer their annual state assessments. Capital News Illinois reports the state is switching away from the SAT exam, which schools had been using since the spring of 2017. The Illinois State Board of Education awarded a six-year, $53 million contract to ACT in May. The change only affects the statewide assessments that Illinois schools are required to administer under the federal Every Student Succeeds Act. Students who still want to take the SAT exam, either for college admissions or scholarship applications, will still be allowed to do so at their own expense. Public colleges and universities in Illinois no longer require applicants to submit standardized test scores to be admitted. A group of Illinois teachers spent a week learning how to teach their students about water and their local watersheds. It culminated with a kayak ride down the Rock River, and Peter Medlin floated down the river with his microphone to learn more. We are officially out on the rock. A small group of teachers paddle south towards Rockford. Barely a cloud in the sky, a bunch of yaks on the water. Feeling good. 
This kayak trip was at the end of a free workshop from the University of Illinois Extension. The K-12 teachers soaked in lessons from local hydrologists, a geologist, and a soil specialist. What you know about is what you take care of. That's Peggy Annecy. She's an environmental educator with the U of I Extension who organized the watershed workshop. And teachers of all sorts took part, not just environmental educators. And because what you know about is what you take care of, the week started with a lesson on what a watershed even is. Annecy says you can think of a watershed like a bathtub. All of the water that falls into your watershed collects and eventually drains, like the tub drain in this simile, into a river, like the rock where we're kayaking right now. So you have tiny watersheds that are in bigger watersheds, and eventually one-third of the U.S. drains into the Mississippi watershed. So the Mississippi literally drains a third of the United States, and that's our big watershed that we're in, and everything we put in it, from lawn care stuff to stuff down the drain, everything goes in your watershed. You know, as I pull the microphone out, I really remember what a weird job I have sometimes. Can I, uh, can I interest you in an on-the-river interview? Chris Morafsa is a counselor at Hiawatha High School who's currently moving downstream alongside me. It's almost like it changes your entire world. He says he's learned so many things that are taken for granted. There was a moment where we were in the water and looking at these macroinvertebrates and all of the larvae from caddisflies and all these things. And he's teaching us that these are bioindicators. These things are telling us the water's clean because they're able to live here. And I saw through his eyes that he's like, this is really clean water, and I'm happy about that. As a counselor, he's probably not going to go back to school and do a water table activity with his students, but he wants to work with his fellow teachers to incorporate these resources and also tell his students about the career fields he learned about. I advocate for so many things. That's what a school counselor does. I'm just going to add a list of things to advocate for. Let's care about our water. You live here too. Install some plants. That's all you got to do. Jody Goodowitz is a science teacher at Sandwich Middle School. From this week, I was just curious if there's things that you are particularly excited about taking with you back into the classroom. I really think like the connection between soil and water and like the kids understanding that connection, I think is huge. Cause at her old school, a group of her students planted native plants to help prevent flooding behind the building. And now she's building up her new school's STEM program and figuring out how to incorporate environmental science. Where am I going to find this grant money to make these kids do this class, but then design a rain garden for our campus and then, you know, be able to actually implement this you know, design that they've come up Becky LeBole is a fourth grade teacher in Samanac, and as she paddles, she's looking for examples along the water of best management practices and erosion, and she's thinking about the passion the experts showed this week and how she'll bring some of those lessons back to her elementary school students. How do we take care of our water and our soil? All of those things are things you can take back into the classroom no matter what age you work with. Luckily, a few of her colleagues are out on the water learning too, and all of the educators, no matter their grade level, are hoping to use what they've learned to teach their students how to see their community in a new way, to show them how connected they are to their local watershed and the positive impact they can make. From the middle of the Rock River, I'm Peter Medlin. That story comes to us from NPR member station WNIJ in Rockford, Illinois. The Gateway is a production of St. Louis Public Radio, music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. We are a member-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. I'm Jonathan All, and from the St. Louis Public Radio newsroom, this has been The Gateway. Have a great weekend.